Welcome back to Juice's Arthropods. My name is Juice, and today we're going to discuss pros and cons and care of mantids in general. So the reason for my disclaimer that this is going to be a general mantis care video is because there are going to be some types of care that we're going to discuss that will not apply blanket across all mantids. The reason I want to make mention of that is because there's lots of different mantids in the world and lots of different care. Some of them have very, very high requirements for humidity and some of them are a little bit more lax as far as pets go. So what I want to do today is just kind of discuss general care, kind of get an idea on whether the mantis is going to be the type of pet that you're going to want and go uh, obviously over the pros and the very deep cons that these species have. So first I want to discuss diet. Oftentimes you will see uh, blue bottle fly spikes or other touch, uh, such flies. Those are totally reasonable, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a secret here. Um, you don't have to do all that. You really just need to have fruit flies when they're babies. And then they will have, for most of them, they will accept a very wide range of dieting. Ghosts, orchids, all the typical mantids you guys are going to have, you can totally feed them dubia roaches, crickets from a good vendor, not Petco, uh, and other t such feeders, you can feed them. I've even had my Chinese mantids eating hornworms, so you can totally give them a variety of different foods. Now, one caveat I want to make with this is, if the creature doesn't move real quickly, if it doesn't move sporadically, some species of mantids tend to kind of just ignore it. So the faster it moves and the more jerky the movements, the mantids seem to be much more uh, attached to attacking that creature, much like flies move very, very quickly. They are very much a motion activated type of species uh, and they are very intelligent. So if something is moving so sm like slowly, like say a horned worm, where it's just like kind of inching on by, sometimes they're just going to ignore it entirely because they don't even see it but if you dangle that hornworm in front of them and you kind of make it move sporadically they will gladly grab it from you so when it comes to diet treat these like you would any other carnivorous species um, you want to give them as much of a varied diverse diet as you possibly can if you fed them nothing but fruit flies if they're a small species for the rest of life would it be fine sure but you know and there is not a lot of scientific evidence on whether or not a varied diet is actually beneficial for them but that's what they're getting in the wild so um you know you could probably survive eating meat and cheese all the time but it wouldn't exactly be a healthy living at the end of the day so next i want to talk about care requirements do you see these boxes in front of me? These are all temporary homes for them, okay? You need to have a couple basic things for mantis, and it needs, these are actually pretty crucial. One, it needs to hold humidity. This is the most crucial thing I can tell you. Mantids are very fickle when it comes to humidity. If you do not have something that retains the humidity, it is going to kill them. Just blanket statement, okay? So something that holds in humidity. I see oftentimes you'll have these almost like a mesh net cage that they'll provide, almost like a butter, uh, butterfly net kind of mesh. I would not recommend that at all. That it's something you could temporarily put them in, but I would not recommend that for long term. The reason for that is that it's going to immediately dry out and then you're going to have a very, uh, very desiccated and dead mantis in a very short amount of time. So when it comes to care, you want something that is going to be very tall, very wide, and is also going to hold humidity. So when I say very tall and very wide, the rule of thumb that applies to mantids is kind of the same one that applies to millipedes. You want to have about three, uh, three times their length and height when it comes to the size. So if a mantid can get up to nine inches, that's 27 inches that you need to make sure that you have for a cage. So what I would recommend is something like this. You can get Amax boxes that you can sell. They, by the way, before... Ah, there's gonna be that one guy on YouTube. He's gonna get real shitty about the fact that the vents I have in these aren't that big. AMAC boxes are perfect for these guys because they can climb up the AMAC box even when they are wet. So just as a little heads up. So something like this that they can climb the sides, they can climb the tops, they can dangle from, and you definitely want to have something. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can take like a cloth like tool and a um, just glue it to the top of the cage so that way you have something that they can dangle from. So you really want to have something they can dangle from. This is how they molt. If they don't have the room and when they're trying to molt, they will essentially pull the body out and then dangle from their previous uh, molt left over, right? If you don't have the room and you don't have something they can hook their feet into, like a surface that will be capable for them, they will fall and they will die. 
Miss molts, when you're that small and you fall that hard, kill them. So this is the number one thing that will actually murder your mantis. So your uh, the essentially your cage that you have them in has to be three times the width and height, and you need to make sure that it can hold a lot of humidity in there. What you put in that is irrelevant. It could be any kind of fake leaves, real leaves. They do not give a crap. As long as they have the ability to walk around and drink water off the sides, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more here in a minute. So I just men mentioned a second ago, um, just having water droplets on the cage. Humidity is literally the most important thing when it comes to mantids. So do you see this temperature and hygrometer that's over my shoulder? See how it says here that it's 76 degrees Fahrenheit and 52% humidity? That's what my house is all of the time. 52 humidity is almost actually a little bit too high. So all of the care tips I'm giving you are going to be based on my humidity. If you live in anywhere in the Midwest, ignore this because your humidity is not this low it is much higher okay and the temperature is perfect and ideal for most species uh, to live fine but some mantids are going to need it a little bit more warm if you're going to have an ooth if breeding is something that you want to do so what i recommend if you are just watching this for the care and love of one mantis or a couple but you don't plan on breeding them then keep listening if you plan on breeding, ignore everything I'm about to say because it's completely irrelevant to you, okay? So, mantids are great because you do not need any kind of external heat source. You can, but it's not necessary. And you don't want to put them on the bottom of any invertebrate cage ever. Bugs don't have a lot of the thinky thinky parts. So one of the things they will do when it gets hot is they will go all the way to the bottom. If that heat mat is on the bottom and it's irradiating heat through the soil, because you're probably not putting much substrate in these things, then what it's inevitably going to do is just, just going to cook your little idiot because he doesn't know better, okay? So make sure that if you are doing any kind of heat mat, it's on the side, like almost like the bottom side of it. And honestly, with mantids, unless you live somewhere very cold, if you listen, if you live in California or anywhere like Florida, you do not need any external heat source, okay? Now, when it comes to humidity... There's very few species in the mantid uh, species, I guess, uh, order that do not need any kind of humidity. So ghost mantids are very popular because with this humidity behind me, they would be totally fine. Now, mantids will not drink out of a water dish or they will drown in a water dish. So you do have to spray them and I particularly spray them every two days. For additional humidity, you could spray them more often depending on species which is i'm going to get a little bit deeper into why this is crucial that you hear what i just said about that um later when we talk about cons because there are issues that can arise with too much humidity one of them being you'll kill them so when it comes to humidity ventilation and humidity have to go hand in hand but it's very crucial that when you are determining what type of species you have such as for instance you know the um the ghost mantis it is very crucial that you have the right humidity because you are not going to keep the ghost mantis at the exact same that you're going to have Pachy, uh, Pachy mantis by Singulata, which is actually from Brazil. So it's very crucial that you identify what that humidity is before you get the mantis at all, okay? Juice, what are the pros? Glad you asked. The pros, first and foremost, are they're freaking weird, man. These things are like aliens. They look at you with compound eyes, but have central focus beads or whatever the hell they have going on, where like, there'll be like a single pupil they can look at you. I'll get an entomologist at some point to explain their eyes, it's crazy. So they can look at you. They also have necks. Think about other insects that you've seen. How many of them have necks? That's weird, right? Beetles don't have necks. Jumping spiders don't. They got little tiny heads that kind of turn, but they don't have a whole long ass human like neck. Praying mantids do. And it's freaking weird. We don't think about it enough, but we have an insect that can eat hummingbirds on our planet. And like everyone's just fine with that. So weird and alien like, huge pro in my book. These guys are up there with some of the most bizarre creatures you will ever come across, which leads to the next thing. They're also really freaking cute, man. I have six types of mantids on this table with me. Not a single one looks like the others. 
Some of them, like the Dragon Mantid, look just like a Xenomorph, and it's super weird. You've got Ghost Mantids, which I don't know what the hell's going on at the top of their head, but it's like a whole other thing. And then you also have the Orchid Mantis, which, this is going to blow your mind, they evolved before Orchids. So these guys have been around before Orchids and just look like that. So what the hell, nature? So cute as a button, absolutely adorable, weird as hell. Also, very active. These guys will walk around all the time until they don't. Sometimes they just kind of dangle for long periods and do this weird, like, they kind of look like they're about to jump into a hopscotch-like ring, but they don't. It's very weird thing that they do. And each particular one has a certain characteristics depending on what they are. Some of them will kind of do a stutter step. Some of them look like they're having seizures. They're just very weird, but they're very active, especially when they're eating. They will have no problem uh, showcasing exactly what they're going for. Some of them are active hunters, much like the Orchid Mantis. They will just run their prey down. And then some of them are more ambush hunters. All of them have that capabilities, but just a very cool active pet. Now, I'm going to say the next thing, and I want to make it abundantly clear. Comparatively to all of the other species of insects, okay? They're kind of smart. They will climb you. They're aware you're a human. Well, at least they are aware you're a living creature. They will sometimes do weird things, and then sometimes they seem to learn from those mistakes. Now, maybe I'm just adding a lot of personality traits onto a bug, but I, I have to take care of them all of the time. So I notice little characteristics. For instance, they really like when a thing moves a lot. And also, they will absolutely attack and bite you, and they do not give a shit how big you are. So there's just a a particular intelligence of them that I really, really find admirable. Um, but that intelligence is going to lead to some of the cons I'm going to discuss next. So let's discuss cons. Humidity requirements. Do you know how hard it is to keep multiple mantids if the range of humidity requirements is from 50% to 90%? Uh, the answer is about as difficult of a problem that I'm dealing with every day. Each one of these six has completely different humidity requirements. Now, you can bypass that by monitoring them with the hygrometers. You can also just do what I do and you can spray them every couple days and you can identify some of the problems you're having. But you, if you're the type of person that only likes to have a pet at a time and not 5,000 at a time, probably don't want to deal with the death of their pet. And I don't want to deal with it either. But these are sometimes risks that you gotta just deal with when you live in a state that has absolutely humid or no humidity. So, I will oftentimes make sure that I am giving them water every day or every other day. This really alleviates most of the humidity issues you're gonna have. But the humidity issue will be a real problem for those of you who live in a state where it's not as humid as my state, like say, uh, Georgia where you're gonna have naturally 80% humidity now you've got yourself a ghost mantid that only needs 50% now they're allowing for a little bit more humidity but if you go too much mantids will absolutely die and part of the reason that it's not a good idea for mantids to have too much humidity is because of another thing that happens very commonly in mantids which is too much fluid in their cage can actually cause infections that will kill them it both gets in their I'm going to use the word lungs lightly, but what I mean is they're breathing apparatus that can cause that, but they also can get eye infections that actually will make their entire eye go black and they will be blind from that point, which makes eating very difficult, especially if you've decided to feed them something like crickets, which are omnivorous and could harm them. So it's very important that you understand that humidity and the amount of fluids you're giving them can directly uh, impact their sight and or kill them so just be very wary on how much water and how often you're giving that and make sure that it's completely in alignment with the humidity um the ventilation that you actually have within the container i'm not done with the cons i know i love mantids don't get me wrong but man there is way more cons than there are actual pros disclaimer these are not user-friendly pets with the exception of one species that's the chinese mantids or mantis which is all over the United States, or maybe a Carolina mantis, there is just not a lot of mantids that are user friendly. Before you get any of the ones in front of me, uh, I will list them in my YouTube video. You need to do extensive research, but please try out a Chinese mantis first. 
Those guys can miss molt three times and still survive. They are a very hardy creature. All of the rest of them are not, unless you know what you're doing. So, they don't live very long. That's a huge con. A year and a half is kind of a short amount of time when you compare it to, say, say, um, say a tarantula that can live up to 20 years. Now, another thing is, most of them cannot live communally, except with the, a few exceptions, meaning up till about L2, they can, some L3, which is their number of instars, and also ghosts, which sp apparently can if they're from the same ooth. So, there's very few mantids that can live communally, which means, unfortunately, see how I have six cages here? Do you see these racks behind me? Do you see all of these AMAC boxes? Those are individual mantids, because I have to if I want to have 50 plus mantids, which is really, really annoying when you're trying to love a pet and you have to spend about an hour and a half just doing everyday care for these guys. So that's a huge con in my book. And this last con, I mentioned it earlier, they're a little bit intelligent, but they have this one habit that's really annoying. They'll always climb up, no matter what. This will be really cute in the beginning because they'll give you little baby hands and they'll look like they're climbing to you. But when you're trying to feed them by yourself and you have to put food inside that container and they keep escaping, that gets really annoying. I know this sounds adorable. I It is actually really adorable. But it's a really big con when you're trying to juggle, say, fruit flies and also the mantis that is dead set on climbing on top of your head all of the time. So. This also can mean sometimes when you're trying to put the lids back on their cage, no matter what that setup is, they're going to try to shove their legs in the holes. They're going to try to climb back out because all they ever want to do is get to the top of something so they can dangle and catch flies. That's all their little dumb idiot brains know what to do. So that's a huge con in my book because when I've got carnivore day and it's two and a half hours long already, 50 mantids all trying to climb with baby hands, which is actually pretty cute, is kind of annoying, which is kind of a, a con, but for you, that might be a pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Um, I will show some footage of the actual mantids that I have here in front of me. I will have these hopefully on sale in the next six months. I appreciate it. I hope you liked it. Like and subscribe. Comment below if you have any thoughts. Maybe mantids are your favorite and you absolutely disagree with me. Let me know. Or maybe you've tried buying mantids before and you feel the exact same way. So I look forward to your comments. I appreciate it. Like us. Subscribe to us. Watch us on Instagram. And we'll see you real soon.